this is an interactive presentation. Um, I need, if, if everybody's going to be as quiet as they are now, then this is going to be really boring. Okay? So you guys are going to have to talk. I did approach a couple people that said if no one's talking, then you're going to be called on. So those people I didn't talk to, if you guys would just, you know, protect those people from having me called on me. I know they'd really appreciate it. So today we are going to go through a contracts <laughs> course. Okay? So I'm going to be reading from this book, right? Oh, <laughs> we are going to go through some cases and stuff, so hopefully this will be fun. We are going to talk about contracts, and it's the what, why, and how of contracts. And the first thing I want to do is a definition of the contract. And I got this out of black one over here. And a contract essentially is an agreement between two or more persons which creates an obligation to do or not to do a particular thing. Okay? That's all you guys need. I can go now, right? We're done? <laughs> all right. First question I'm usually asked is, do all contracts have to be in writing? All right? And do you guys know the answer to that? No. Okay. No. The answer is no. Most contracts don't have to be in writing. In fact, you guys enter into contracts every day that aren't in writing. Okay? Most of the time they're by performance. They're, you know, those type of contracts. Now, most business contracts should be in writing. Okay? And these are contracts here that I'm going to go through that usually have to be in writing, and they stretch usually there's always great parts in the law, which is a lot of fun, to be enforceable, okay? And a contract to answer for a debt of another person, a contract to sell goods of $500 or more, and this is always a gray area, unless the buyer actually receives and accepts the goods or gives something in part payment of them, okay? An agreement which cannot be performed within one year, and a contract for an interest in real estate. Okay? Those are typically agreements or, or uh, matters that have to be in writing. And if they're not in writing, then essentially they're avoidable. <coughs> now, there are exceptions. Again, we have actually a case going on right now in regards to the last one that's an exception to the rule when we're talking about part performance. So we're not going into that today. But we are going to talk about elements of the contract. Okay? And contract involves essentially six things. We're going to talk just about a couple of these things today, but it involves an offer, an acceptance, consideration, you have to have the capacity to contract. You have to be able to enter into that. The intent of the parties to a contract, and then the object of the contract. Okay. All right. We're going to start with the object of the contract today first. The contract must be for a legal purpose. Okay. So a contract cannot be for an illegal purpose. All right. So if let's see, April. I'm going to pick on April. She's from my office. I can pick her on that. If your drug dealer, if he sells you drugs and you don't pay him, your drug dealer can't come back and sue you to collect on those drugs, right? Okay? Guys, that's a little bit funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be a really rough group. I was just going to say that, but they can go after you and tax you. Okay, well, yeah, that's true. Contract is not enforceable if it is illegal or against public policy. <laughs> and contract is basically <coughs> restraint on trade, price fixing, and monopolies are illegal. Okay? Now, we're going to do some cases today, okay? We're going to talk about a couple different cases. I want to get your guys' reactions and thoughts on these cases. A lot of these cases can go either way sometimes, okay? And I'll give you what happened in the case at the end, all right? But this is where I need your interaction with me, okay? So we're going to run through the fact pattern, and you guys tell me what happened in these cases. Most of these cases are really great old cases. And in fact, some of these cases we got over the pond in England because we love talking about pollens and fun stuff like that, right? All right, this one happened here in Minnesota, okay? This human son was the owner of property in the city of Chicago. Okay? And the city of Chicago had passed an ordinance that was unlawful for any person in the city of Chicago to sell real estate without a license. Okay? Much like today, you know, you have to have your real estate license to sell real estate. Okay? This is back in 1892. Human son asked Buckley to find a purchaser for his property, promising to pay him a commission if he found a purchaser. Okay? Buckley went out and found a purchaser. By the way, Buckley didn't have a license. The property was sold and Buckley demanded his commission. Well, Humison, being the great guy that he is, said, ah, thanks, but I'm not going to pay him to keep all the money. Yeah. Sound familiar sometimes? Yeah. yeah. Buckley brought a lawsuit against Humison based on the agreement between them. All right? So, what happened? Did they have a contract? Yeah, it was a verbal contract or written? <laughs> well, even if, let's, let's presume that this contract was in writing. Okay? Let's say that for our purposes, this contract was in writing, all right? Signed by both parties. It's against the law. <laughs> is it legal? What's that? Is it legal? Why? Because he has no license. And Dan, I think, said the same thing? Because yeah. it was against the law, so it's... So you think Buckley gets paid? He did all the work, right? Depends on how good his lawyer is. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't born.
born yet, so that's going to be him, right? Um, well, but, he, but Buckley did all the work, right? I mean, he, he went out, he did exactly what he said he was going to do, and if it was in writing. When you're selling yeah. drugs and it's illegal, you're doing right. all the work and you still. <clears throat> right. Well, decision. Business transaction is in violation of law. Exactly what you guys, both you guys said. It cannot be made a foundation of a valid contract. And the general rules for a statute makes a particular business unlawful, or for an unlicensed person unlawful, any contract made by the business is not authorized. As a result, Buckley was not paid, okay? Now, this is kind of has implications today, okay? Contractors, okay? Minnesota, obviously, the Department of Labor and Industry is coming down and chomping on you guys, you guys know that, right? And they're saying everybody has to be licensed, well, not everybody, but almost everybody has to be licensed, right? Okay? That's an example of when this could occur. We had a case where someone came in and did work for somebody and they were unlicensed and they acted as a contractor. Um, we didn't actually proceed forward with the case, but I think at the end of the day, I don't think they would have been paid. All right? It's something that you need to make sure that you are up on. You need to make sure that you have your relevant licenses. You need to make sure that you know what you're getting into. And again, today, especially Minnesota, loves to just control everything. That's my soapbox for today. Um, there's a lot of times that you, there may be a license or there may be a requirement that you need to do, and if you want to get compensated, you need to be able to do that. Okay? Any questions on that at all?